What's up everyone and thank you for watching Garage Time again today. This week I hope to complete the front end RS clone look to this 1974 Porsche 911. And all that's really left to do is to mount the bumper to the body and I have some seals. Um, I bought some seals and we need to make some channels that are going to support these seals and just finish up the whole front end. So let's get right to it. Garage time. Okay, these new seals, these go between the hood and the bumper and the fender in the bumper to kind of give it a finished look. And they require a metal channel, kind of similar to the metal channel that I made last week. This channel holds the seal on the inner, inner latch panel. And now we need to make another channel to hold this uh, seal. So this is the seal that goes underneath the, the hood and it has, I don't know if you can see on the camera there, but it, it has um, a, a, round, a round bead that really captures this in place. So rather than relying on glue and you know this thing coming off as I'm driving away fast, I wanna put these in like the factory did and put them in once and for all so they're not gonna just wiggle out and look bad later. And then this one is, uh, this is the one that goes between the fender and the bumper. Um, it also re would, would serve itself well to have a channel. So there's a, there's a small groove in there and if, and if you can see how these might go together, um, a, a little flange on the end of a channel can really retain this seal in place. And this channel will be mounted to the underside of the fenders. So I'm gonna make that channel um, it's the same process that I used to make this channel in last week's video. If you want to go back and watch that video, please click right here. All right, here's the location where that big seal goes. It, it lays right here on the front. This being the later 1974 latch panel, it doesn't have provisions to mount this. We also need to have a, a, a plate to have something to mount the bumper to. So if I were to put this directly onto the fiberglass, then as pressure comes down, you know, the fiberglass is going to deform and it's just, there's no way to hold the, the bumper in place. So, so what I really need to do is create a new um, metal plate that's going to do two things. It's going to hold this seal and it's also going to have uh, a surface to actually attach the bumper to. All right, here's what I have come up with. I've, um, I've drawn this on this piece of cardboard. This is kind of the profile shape. So um, I'm gonna go up, down, and then have this little curly cue to hold the seal. And before I make the entire piece, I made this small piece, which is really the same as I just had drawn on the cardboard. And this piece is gonna go here. So it's gonna attach to the 74 bulkhead. It's gonna have a radius on top, and it's, it's gonna mate up with this edge all the way along. And this is, you know, curved in, in two dimensions. I'll put uh, some nuts on the back of this and this will attach with some screws in places where there's ribs. So one, two, three, four, and then probably here on the ends. And this will go all the way across. This tab here is where I will mount holes to attach the bumper. So right now the bumper is just held up with jack stands, but this will be strong enough to support the weight of the bumper and then that curly cue, which I didn't make on this part, will go on top to, to retain the seal. So the seal goes in this direction, and most of this new bracket will get covered up. Okay, this piece is formed and now you can get an idea um, 
you know, how it fits on. It really closes out this empty space and it's definitely gonna provide some support to this fiberglass bumper, which is, you know, not super strong. It's very lightweight, but uh, I really like having something to attach it to. Um, I haven't made the tabs on the back side. I'm probably gonna weld some tabs on the back side so I can put some nuts on the back and then drill some holes and screw it in um, permanently. And once it's screwed in place and kind of locked down, I can kind of take care. It's got a little bit of a, a smile on this side. All right, at the moment, I'm working on making that seal channel. So I'm gonna try this. I cut a strip of steel, it's um, 20 gauge. I have a piece of hot rolled um, eighth inch thick uh, metal. It's got like a curved uh, edge to it, the way it was rolled. And then I'm just gonna clamp it and try to hammer it over to create that channel that's gonna lock in this seal. All right, we're gonna need a take two on this one. This, this right here in this region right here is, it's, it's folded over, it's a nice round shape to it, but it's just not enough materials. Okay, if at first you don't succeed, just keep trying. So now I have a little more bite on this sheet metal. It's more material to, to follow over and I have a clamped in a vise this time. Yeah, so this was much better. Um, although this time, I think there's too much material. So you can see it, it's folded over. You pick up on that, it's, it's folded over. And, and then there's, there's this section, which has to get folded over again to make it into kind of a, a like a closed C almost. Uh, just enough for the seal to slip in and, and capture it, so. I'm trying to make the channel that is gonna retain this seal onto the car. Uh, it's proving to be difficult. This seal has this shape right here. Let me see if you can see this. It, it, it has a bead that runs along it. So this is the seal that goes on the hood and it's gonna be mounted directly on top of the bumper. Um, and I've already bent this part you know, the 180 degrees, it has a, it has a bend, it comes 180 degrees over, and now it needs one more bend 90 degrees. So planning those bends is, is somewhat hard, but I've tried it on a sample piece, and I, I went to the hardware store, and I, I got this uh, square key. This is a, a, a woodruff key, square key, and it goes inside that bent over channel, and then I can clamp it in the vise and then bend the last 90 degrees. And I, I, th I think it works. It works on this small piece. So now I'm going to try it on the real thing. Okay, I got this channel formed. And um, man, it's, that took a lot of work. Sometimes it's the most mundane things that just take all the time. But I think it was worth it. Um, I don't know if you can see the profile here. There you go. Can you, if you can see that profile right there, it's, it's really just a simple shape, but it, uh, it, it's got really three bends to it in total. So that's it. I, it, it took a little while to, to get the seal to fit. I had to put some silicone oil. I put some silicone oil on there, but now it, it does slide in there. So that's how it will work. Gets all the way on. Okay, here are the parts we've made so far. And here you can see on the back side of, of this piece, which um, is gonna attach the bumper. I've welded on some, some, some washers with some, some nuts on the back side. 
And these screws are what is gonna attach this piece to the car. I gotta drill some holes in the car. Okay, the first fit isn't too bad. You can see the seal is, is underneath here and there's a little space right here. Um, I think what I need to do is slot the holes in the car so I can adjust this side down a little bit. And the same thing over here, adjust it down. And I may need to add a um, stiffener underneath here because it, it is deflecting just a little bit in the middle. So this is uh, sort of to be expected, you know, getting seals to fit. I, I always want adjustability, so that's why I didn't weld this part to the car. I want to screw it on so I can adjust it up and down, um, especially to mate it up with the fender gasket, which I haven't even started yet. So believe it or not, this is still going to need more work. Um, not even a third of the way done getting the bumper gaskets on. All right, now I'm just going to tack on this uh, seal channel so I can fit it one more time. Here's a real quick close up of this part with the welded in channel. So right here is the channel which the seal will sit in. And then this is the new piece attached to the car in blue. So it goes all the way across and hopefully it puts the seal in the right place and it's also in the right height so everything looks good when the heel, when the hood is closed okay i'm going to see if i can install the seal here without taking the piece or the fender loose yeah that fits uh pretty good and you know, th these bolts behind here aren't 100% tight, um, but it's, it's pretty firm. So let's close the hood and see how it looks. Yeah, so that's actually pretty good in terms of the height. The fenders are pretty flush with the hood, flush on this side, and there's a little bit of a gap, but the seal has a lip on the bottom, and in order for that to work, it has to have some pressure from the bumper. So I don't know if I'm gonna put a stiffening piece underneath here or not. Um, I, I probably will, because I always overkill things, but the bumper itself, even though it's fiberglass, might be enough to just get the seal in the perfect place. And then it's, in terms of distance from here, it's, it's pretty good. It looks like it might be recessed a little bit on this side. This side, it's about perfect. So if anything, I'll have to cut the weld and adjust that channel just out a little bit on the left-hand side. And that's just the way it is, you know, trial and error. That's what takes so much time on building these cars to a decent standard. I'm gonna start looking into the channel that's gonna support the other seals that go underneath the underneath the fenders. Here's a close up of what I just talked about. Uh, that seal goes all the way along the bottom and fits pretty well. It is from the top view, I think you can tell there's, it's, a, it's about a 16th of an inch recessed on this side, but this side over here, it fits, it fits really flush. And uh, you know, that part's pretty good. If you look at it from here, you can see a tiny little gap there, but just a little bit of pressure kind of closes that up. So the next order of business is to install this portion of the seal. And it goes here, it kind of continues where this one leaves left off and goes underneath the grill, around, around the turn signals, and then out to the fender well. So this should be one continuous line all the way across the front of the car. Um, and there is a similar channel that goes underneath the brackets that I made that are holding these things in place. So rather than making a new template, I think I can use this one. This is the template that I saved from the fabrication of the brackets underneath here. And it should work fine because it fits 
All right, I just finished making this channel for the seals that go between the fender and the bumper on the sides there. So this is a curved piece, but it's just a simple L shape and it retains the seal like this. There's a small channel in the seal that corresponds with the shape of this metal piece to force this seal into this curve shape here. So this is the outer portion that you can see on the body. Um, and this metal bracket is ultimately going to get welded onto the bottom of the fenders. And once again, this is just another mechanical means to hold the seal in place without it squeezing out or you know, glue oozing all over the place. That's just a more elegant way to retain the seal and um, also be able to adjust it a little bit. I think I'll put screws in initially and then find a way to uh, weld it in when I get closer to getting all the gaps fit and, and everything. Okay, here's the, this is the right side, passenger side, and you can see that this is where the seal is located. Okay, so the big moment is here. The bumper is now permanently attached to the car, which I'm really excited about. This is a big milestone. It's actually starting to look like a RS, which is uh, definitely the goal. Um, the seals are in place. You can see it's sticking out here, haven't been trimmed. But uh, the gap and the alignment here and the curvature with those channels really is, uh, is great. So I, I really like that. I like how it keeps it in position. There's still a little bit of an offset here. Um, I'll come back to that when I'm in a more perfectionist type of mood uh, to fix that. Those just need a little bit of adjustment. Okay, I'm just gonna do a quick walk around the car. You can kind of see how this seal fits in place. Um, this is the, the extra shelf um, I'm not too fond of, but uh, I'm gonna try to uh, adjust that out later. Um, I can maybe adjust the uh, mounting here so this sucks in a little bit, or I may have to section that bumper and cut it out. Um, and there's no housing behind here, uh, so I need to buy the housing. If anyone has one that they're uh, willing to sell, please let me know. Um, I just haven't been able to find one at a good price. But uh, coming around, you can see the seal channel right here is looking pretty good. It's, it's nice and flat all the way across. Really kind of gives it a finished look. Um, the grill is there, bolted in place. Uh, there is a pretty even distance across the front there. And uh, coming around to this side, you can see this is a little bit sucked in right here. So that might need to be adjusted out, out a little bit. And then coming around to this side, it's uh, once again, seals a little bit long, but this is easy to trim. I just don't want to do it until I'm a little bit more confident on the position of the seal. So that's it. The uh, Porsche 911 Carrera RS back date. Um, moving on next week, we'll be working on the back. Okay, before I go, I wanted to show you this kind of fun test. So you might be familiar with the dollar bill test. Uh, it really tests the effectiveness of the seal. So what you want to happen with these bills is there should be some tension on them. So you shouldn't be able to push them in because if you're able to push them in, then air could get in as well. So you want a little bit of tension on this. Now this hood is not latched. It's only um, has its own weight pushing down on the seal, but there's some good tension on each of these um, bills, which means it's uh, not gonna let air rush in, which is ideal. So all the way along here, these are firmly retained in place, especially this one, extra tight. So there you have it, the dollar bill test. And I get to keep the money because no air can rush in. Voila. So thanks again for watching this, uh, this project. I really appreciate your, uh, your support. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. You can follow us on Facebook at Our Garage Time or Instagram at the same place. And uh, thank you again. We'll see you next week. Next week, we are going to start to work on the rear.